All right, good evening, everyone. Uh, welcome to meeting number five of the 2020 Census Ward 8 Redistricting Committee uh, Task Force Committee or Committee Task Force. I don't know, we don't have to use either word. Uh, but this is our fifth of six meetings where our goal is to decide what our proposed redistricted lines for Ward 8 will be. Uh, to include A and C boundaries and S and D locations within those boundaries. Um, our last meeting, uh, we received various iterations of drafts for, for those boundaries or for the proposed final map that we will then present to the um, to the uh, council member who will then pass that along to the uh, Council of the Whole as a proposal for a final vote. Um, I can't say that we have, I, I, I can't say that we have much more to do other than decide between our options here. Um, several of our committee members were able to prepare PDF uh, versions of their map or otherwise present during our last meeting. And we had a good uh, view of the options we have ahead of us. Um, I was able to also prepare a sort of aggregate map with all of those suggestions from our last meeting, uh, as well as the feedback we've gotten via our redistricting uh, solicitation inbox and other formal and non-formal communication on how redistricting should be done. That said, um, I would just like to welcome you all. I don't think we will need nearly as much time as we've had in the past for, for this meeting, um, but we will, if we can, uh, Ms. Lockridge, we are just going to uh, present, represent the maps that we had from our last meeting, plus uh, any that came into the redistricting inbox. Since then, um, there was not much of a change I'll say there was not many, there, there weren't many new submissions between uh, this evening's meeting and the last meeting. So uh, I think, you know, maybe we can go ahead and vote on this tonight because the uh, final step in, uh, in our effort is to uh, have a final submission, to have voted on it, and then to prepare a report which describes uh, how those boundaries uh, were drawn out, the thinking behind them, uh, anything to accommodate a deviation from our 19 to 2100 persons per SMD standard. And um, yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking we may, we may be ahead of the game here. So with that, that being said, um, I've asked, uh, Maggie and Troy, since you're here, if you would just go back and uh, if you'd be willing to represent the map you showed during our last meeting. Um, I know that there aren't many of us on the call, but I was contacted by a few folks who said they wouldn't be able to make it. Uh, I, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't doubt that this lovely weather is part of the reason that uh, <laughs> folks may, may, may have wanted to change the schedules around a bit. But um if we could just represent the uh the last the last uh the meetings from the last the maps from the last meeting and like i said i have an add-on um and i think we will do commentary or solicit commentary comments and I don't see why we can't just go ahead and uh, move towards a vote at this point. And we can spend our um, sixth meeting coming up on March 31st, or I'm sorry, March 28th. Um, we can spend our sixth meeting um, working on that report. Uh, Troy, are you available to show the map you presented last time one more time? Hey, Mr. Chairman, yes, I am. Uh, and I do just want to um, add another, I guess, element here, which is that um, 
I've received additional feedback about the map from last time. I don't know if it came to uh, the committee, but it did come to me. Uh, and I've since been trying to put together an alternative map uh, that just, that maybe, um, I guess, ties in some of those uh, th those concerns, some from last time. And so, um, so yes, I'm able to present to you whatever you need to see right now, Mr. Chairman, uh, and then maybe um, I can then go back and, uh, and, and maybe tell you about some new thinking. So if that works, I'm, I'm ready to proceed. Yes, sir. Um, can, oh, okay. Everyone is joined. Let's see, we have a good number of additional members that have, or at least community members that have come in since we got started. Um, Wanda, can we enable Troy to share his screen or does he? Do you actually have control as host. So, so if you, you now have control oh, okay. as host. So okay. if you're able to go ahead and give him that access. All right. Well, I guess I'll be figuring out how to do this on the phone. Oh, my apologies. <laughs> um, all right. If you just go over his name, click on more. More. Uh, hold on, hold. There's a drop down, which will give you access. Okay. And it seems like you should have that ability now. I haven't tried it. So, yes, I have it. Okay. All right. Um, okay. So, here we go. This is the uh, map from last time that we talked about. Um, and the, the genesis here was to have a ANC that spanned the river, whereas you had folks who were on the, the north side of the ward uh, connected in some way to the legacy part of the ward, the south side. Um, so this was a map that was presented and submitted. Um, now, all the numbers are a little bit off a little bit, but, um, you know, that's just a description error uh, that, that we can certainly help um, define a little bit better. Um, but since that time, as I mentioned, Mr. Chairman, uh, I've received additional feedback um, from some commissioners who uh, are in the impacted area east of the river. And I also heard from uh, Gottlieb as well. Um, and uh, some folks west of the river who were saying that, you know, actually, I can give you a good example. There's a commissioner in 6B, and she um, had complained about how she she's basically, oh, 6D, I think it is. I'm sorry, 7, 7D. <laughs> that is an ANC that's near the jail. And so she um, actually was, I guess, lamenting that she felt like she was on an island um, because, you know, she lives west of the river, but that she's on a commission east of the river where most of the power base is. And so she felt like she was never quite, you know, part of the gang, if you will. <laughs> so um, I heard that from her, also heard from an, another commissioner um, who lives uptown who says something similar about Rock Creek Park and how it too creates this physical barrier. Uh, their ANC, I think it's uh, 3C01, spans the park. And again, that person is on one side of the park and the rest of the commission base is on the other. And they too felt very similarly in, in terms of the issues that they were dealing with. So. I say all that to say that as a result, um, I was able to continue to play around with some uh, figures here. And, and again, I have about 700 people. I don't know what to do with. They're just kind of hanging out there right now. <laughs> so if you have any suggestions, Mr. Chairman, uh, sir, or if anyone has any suggestions, we certainly want to hear that. Uh, but um, uh, as you know, we 
we, we're going to work with the notch. Um, both council members, council member White, council member Allen, have agreed to um, have a ANC that, that spans the notch there, which is going to be in both Ward 6 and Ward 8, so it'll be ANC 6-8. Um, and um, we've been playing around with the numbers there, trying to make it all fit into a single member district or two. And again, I have about 700 people just hanging out right now. Um, so that's where we're at. Okay, okay. Thank you, sir. Um, can I ask, so the person you spoke uh, you spoke with from, I guess, uh, up near Rock Creek Park, who I guess they have an ANC on, that spans both sides of the park, um, was the 2010 census the first time that their ANC crossed the park? That's a great question. I don't have the answer to that. Okay. Because I'm also, th thank you. So, because I'm, I'm also going to look at the, um, the person, I guess you said ANC 7D, who was near the jail. I think Ward 7 crossed the river in 20 in 2000 right not 2010 right it first crossed in 20 in 2000 it and then it crossed again in 2010 and picked up more of the area to the south okay uh, yeah and then of course now it's even it's crossing it's even greater more. yeah so the the, the thinking I, i'm thinking there is if you're going to add residents to a ward that now is on both sides of a park or a river, there should be an opportunity on this first census to have those folks integrated into the ward. Um, I, I don't remember if it was Councilwoman Silverman or maybe it was uh, Councilman White, but I remember the comment being that you don't, that we didn't want to isolate the new um, Ward 8 residents. Uh, like I said, I forget who said that, but it seems like, and, and based on the Ward 7 uh, history, there was an opportunity after a second census to then split the ANCs on those boundaries. But now that we're doing this for the first time and it seems like our ward, our new West of the River Ward 8 residents are of a smaller number than those that were added to Ward 7 in 2000 and much less so than 2010. So, I mean, the, 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 the council having voted to carry Ward 8 West of the River to um, the Navy Yard and uh, <laughs> To whatever, to whatever extent the Navy Yard notch, um, I'm just I'm just wondering if there if we have given a fair if we're giving a fair chance to the newest Ward Eight residents to be Ward Eight residents, uh, noting that the feedback that we received or you received came from outside of Ward Eight, like it was Ward Seven and I don't know Ward Four Three. Um. <laughs> um, but that that being said, thank you for the feedback. Um, and I guess let's see, we have some comments in the chat here. Uh, river Terrace is across the river and has been part of Ward Seven for decades. We're seeing comment is across the bridge. Okay, Fairlawn has been part of Ward Six. Yeah, uh, Fairlawn has been part of Ward Six at different points in history. Isolation was not much of an issue as it is being made here. Um, Dion, would you would you mind uh, com speaking on that comment in the chat? Uh, we and just to reiterate for those of you all who just joined, um, we are going back and revisiting all of the maps that we have uh, visuals of per the last meeting and anything that's been submitted since. Um, and unless we have any strong commentary against it, because we have to submit a uh, redistricting report, uh, 
by the 1st of April, uh, it seems that we have enough feedback to go ahead and vote um, as a committee on a map to then, su to, to then submit to the council, uh, because I believe we only have uh, three or four uh, as of this time. Um, so we have the opportunity to be well ahead of schedule and to thoughtfully create a report for that, um, for that final deliverable. But uh, let's see. Commissioner White's here. Hey, y'all. Dion, can I can you speak more on uh, your, your comment in the chat? And I'm, I'm guessing I need to do something to allow you to speak here. Does anybody have any advice on how to? Yeah, if you go over her name, you go back to that more and it'll say allow to speak. Oh, yeah. Got it? Okay. Yep. Uh, allowed to talk. There we go. Okay, I'm here. Thank you. All right. Thanks. What was your comment or your idea? About Fairlawn. Fairlawn has been part of Ward Six at different points in history, and isolation was not a as much of an issue here. And I think we really need to focus on the social issues that are creating the geographic problems. I mean, because really A and C boundaries are not real things. You know, you're gonna live in community with wh whoever you live in community with. And yeah, they do have to interface with us in a way that they didn't have to before. And I think that's the issue is not about them being isolated. It's about them not wanting to integrate into Ward 8 and the rest of, with war, the rest of Ward 8. When you say they or them- Ward 6 who, residents who I'm are- sorry? Ward six residents who are migrating into Ward eight. Okay, okay. So we need to be real about that issue and not call it something that it's not. Uh, understood, point taken. Um, there are a lot of uh, deeper issues behind redistricting, but I think those issues might be outside of the scope of our task at hand. Um, and Mr. Chairman, yes, we, we haven't had that issue come up uh, in any of the meetings that we've held over in, in uh, the former Ward 6. Um, everyone is pretty much on board with being obviously being part of Ward 8. And they did like the idea of a shared commission. Um, but if I could uh, ask uh, fellow committee member, task force member Jamila White, uh, to speak because she had mentioned last time that she um, had some reservations about um, us having a commission, an 8A or whatever it's going to be, 8F, whatever, uh, span the river because that, you know, that, that geographical boundary um, was important. And the issues that are sort of omnipresent here, uh, that uh, would be great to continue to focus on those things, uh, the commissioners who live on this side. So um, I, I have not heard any uh, negative feedback about um, being part of a, a commission that spans the river from um, our new residents over in Ward, uh, the former Ward 6. Um, but I did hear others talk about other commissioners and I've received the reports from other commissioners who said that you know, when you have these geographical boundaries, be it a park, be it a river, uh, it, it is a bit isolating uh, for that one commissioner that may have to, you know, that sits on a commission that is on the other side of whatever boundary this is, but then they have to go across that boundary to, you know, sort of focus there. And, and sometimes that's, it's um, difficult. That's, that's, the only, that's the only point I wanted to make about that. Okay, okay. Um, we're we're kind of going to freestyle this meeting since there are eight, eight of us committee members here. That being said, uh, Commissioner White, anything you want to speak on regarding uh, Commissioner Presswood's point? Now, she's a panelist, so she should be just able to unmute herself if she wants to talk, right? Okay. All right. Well, um, no worries. If there's 
nothing further on that point. I don't see anything additional in the chat. Um, I would like to ask Maggie if she is ready to present her whole ward map. And as I said before, um, given all the feedback that we gotten up until that um, Office of Planning deadline last week, I, I've attempted to integrate all of that into one map that I'll present in a bit, but I'd like to uh, have Maggie, if you're ready. Mr. Chairman, there's a question in the Q&A prior to if we could get that. Okay. When appropriate, can you briefly explain the hybrid A and, A and C you mentioned in relation to the notch in the Navy Yard area? Would it only be engaged on certain issues related to traffic or, or on all decisions? All right, Carmen, thank you for that. Um, the Navy Yard notch looks like it will consist of, uh, I guess, two additional commissioners who would integrate into whatever form of a commission that includes uh, the Ward 8 portion of Navy Yard. And in that they would be commissioners for issues uh, in their area. Because, because our effort is related more so to ANC boundaries, uh, how neighborhoods function within the ward, the notch was carved out um, out of the Ward 6 boundary residents because they all have, um, I, I guess, they all have a, a life in common in close proximity. They're south of uh, 695 and east of South Capitol Street. Uh, that being said, they would be able to vote, their commissioner would be able to vote just as any other commissioner would um, within that ANC once it, once it comes into fruition. And I guess that's an answered question. Any other uh, hands to be raised or comments from anyone on that? I don't see any further hands at this moment. Okay, thank you. Uh, Mr. Chairman, only thing I will add to, to your brilliant comments is just that those individuals who live on the Ward 8 side of, the, of that map, the notch, Will, will continue to be Ward 8 residents. Those who are on the uh, Ward 6 side will be Ward 6 residents. And, um, you know, basically the commission would span the two wards, uh, but how you are elected will still be basically um, based on your ward and based on your address. So nothing changes really in function. It's just that it, it it's a hybrid or what well, she said hybrid, it's a cross boundary um, commission. Uh, that's the only difference. And there is precedent. We have several of those already in our city. Thank you for that, uh, Commissioner Presswood. Um, that, that pretty much is the answer there. Um, and let's see. I'm not seeing anything else in the, in the chat or the Q&A otherwise. Uh, Maggie, if you're not ready, I am going to go ahead I, I am ready. I can I okay. can my map. Okay. Um, well, then let me get this hovering thing right and I'll offer you the opportunity. It looks like I, I can share my screen. Oh, okay. Um, yes. So I'm actually going to start by sharing um, the map that was presented at the previous meeting um, and kind of switch over to, to kind of how I approach the ward level map. Um, so the, the ANC that I was, you know, um, volunteered to um, do outreach for was ANC 8E. Um, and, you know, prior to our previous meeting, really approached it from looking at the existing 8E boundaries and working within that to create a, um, some new SMD boundaries. Um, following that, um, meeting and some feedback from members of the committee. Um, and, and mainly the, the largest piece of feedback was about Henson Ridge um, and keeping that um, part of 8E together under a single SMD um, instead of split between two 
um, SMDs like we have here between 8E01 and 8E02. Um, so kind of based on that, um, and I'll just kind of show kind of a reimagined um, 8E and, and kind of a, a um, what I did here was also in addition to splitting, uh, kind of shifting how 8E02 and 8E01 are divided to keep um, as much of um, Henson Ridge together under a single SMD um, was also to pull the current um, 8B06 and 8B07 um, into an 8E um, ANC. Um, the reason I'm showing this is because this is kind of how I started thinking about my full ward level map. Um, you know, kind of beginning with 8E, since this was the, the ANC that, you know, we heard from and in our, the meeting last week, um, there were no um, real concerns, you know, either one way or another in terms of preferences um, from the community and from the ANC um, at their meeting last week, whenever we, we attended and, and had some time to, to talk about redistricting. Um, with the folks um, who are both on the commission and the members of the community who are in attendance. Um, so kind of using that, um, and please bear in mind that some of the numbers are a little bit off and, you know, adjusted and, you know, a little bit more, more creative in order to get it to the point of being, um, you know, within those bounds. Um, I, I will highlight that um, probably the, Area north of Suitland Parkway could probably um, use some additional feedback. So I don't know if Chair Thompson, um, kind of on your map, if you have any suggestions or you know probably better better options than I do. Um, and then I did kind of my rationale for um, the Navy Yard portion of Ward Eight was to keep it as a standalone um, uh, ANC commission, and I did not go in, and subdivide it into into SMDs. Um, and so I think, you know, kind of to focus on um, what we have here within um, this, this current map is, um, and I'm going to pull up my notes, at least some suggestions for how to um, like allocate these across um, ANC commissions, um, all of these single member districts. Um, so the first thing would be um, you know, using that 8E, um, all of the 8E numbers um, from the map I showed before this, you know, using that as the starting point. Um, and then if we go down to um, below that, um, we have, yeah, I'm trying to find this email, um, and um, would be what I'd imagine would, which would be A and C 8D. Um, actually, no. Uh, a, another commission here <laughs> would, um, I imagine it would be 8D01, 8D02, 8D03, um, D04, D05, um, D07, and then um, these new SMDs of 38 and 41 um, would be combined. And, and this was really, you know, um, I'll admit it was done kind of later in the day, <laughs> uh, later in the evening. Um, it might not. Um, be the best approach, but I mean, I think definitely as a starting point um, for, our, for our conversations this evening. Um, and that this, so this area kind of in here would be its, its own SMD, kind of where, where my mouse and cursor is. Um, and then kind of continuing um, south, I imagine another SMD, um, I'm trying to just find my notes here. Um, Um, would would be this 8CO2, 8CO3, um, 8CO1, um, 8DO6, 40. Um, so within here, and then kind of wrapping up this way. Um, and I don't know what that 8AO1 is. Um, I, I will highlight one thing is that there's these 624 um, in residents over here that I got around to the point. I'm like, I forgot to I kind of overlooked that um, in creating the map. And then, um, you know, continuing up this way to looking at 8A01 being mainly in here and then 8B, 8A and then 8B. Um, 
again, I don't know if there's any specific questions or, or kind of comments about um, how I thought about the map or, or any questions about specific areas you'd like to see again. So, yeah, I had a question. Mm -hmm. So it, lo it looks like you have 8C has the original one through seven commissions and you added two more for a total of eight or I think you said but, 41 and 38, or was that 40, 41 and 38 for a total of nine? Um, so yeah, sorry. I, 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 that's actually an excellent question, um, Mr. Chair. Um, and kind of the way that, that I saw it um, in, in what I envision would be that 8A would be S7 uh, single member districts, 8B would be seven, um, 8C would have eight, um, 8D would be on the larger side with 10, um, and 8E would have six, yeah. Um, and then 8F, which is the Navy Yard with the Navy Yard notch that I didn't divide down into s and -Ds. Okay, thank you. So mm -hmm. I see number 37 has 624 residents. Yes. This, Does that mean that somewhere else there's a very large s and um, Actually, let me just take, let me zoom out really quickly. Um, I don't believe so. The only one that is any bit significantly, and I think I might have made a note in the original um, email, maybe not. Um, that would is like significantly outside of that, you know, 1900 to 2100 bounds um, would be this 8E01 here, which is sitting at 1657. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Gotcha. It looks, looks, looks good. It looks like you maintain fidelity to most everything that we attempted. Now I do see, now that, now that, now that I'm looking at the top of this screen, mm -hmm. as it is right now, 8A07 is 3676. Oh, man, so uh, that's, that, I'm guessing 8A07, again, this was done uh, later. Um, so it's, it, I'm, it's possible that between 8A07 and 8B07, um, something just got, you know, clicked one way or another. Um, but I, I can revisit and always send something something over to you after the close of this meeting. Okay, okay. <laughs> Generally speaking, it looks like uh, there's a split. There's three splits here. There's the Navy Yard split, mm -hmm. uh, regardless of whether you include the notch or not. There's Ward 8 north of the Suitland Parkway, which is sort of split between 8 A and B, and then there's Ward 8 south of the Suitland Parkway, which is 8E, D, and C. C. Uh -huh. And C seems to take up or split Bowling Air Force Base in half and then comes around the bottom like uh, DC pl um, Blue Plains and... Mm -hmm the fire training center and Metro. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. All right. That, be, thank you. Thank you for that, Maggie. That being said, I see we have some hands raised, some uh, comments in the chat. So um, let me, let's see. Sorry, I'm slow here with the whole. Um, Sheila, I'm asking you to unmute by clicking a button. So can you speak? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Thanks, Maggie. Great map. Can you zoom in um, on the 8D portions? Because <clears throat> in my plane with 8D as well, I created additional um s and d so i just want to see what your, what your streets look like yeah um I'm happy to sheila um here's the I'll, I'll we'll kind of take this in chunks if i can figure out how to look okay. bigger um yeah and then um so we have the non the non like 8D numbers and at least kind of what I was thinking um, it would be um, 
38 and 41, which are at the bottom of the screen, would be included as part of um, 8D as well. And I'll, I'll shift down here if, if it's good for you, Sheila. Okay. Four, seven is there. Six is there. Forty. Okay. Is your map in Esri? Is it safe? I, it's probably easy if I look at it. Um. So I've not. I've. So I've, um, I'll. I'll double check. I'll save it in Esri. Do I then need to share it in Esri for it to be viewed? Yeah, just okay. do the share to everyone, but name it like Maggie's map or something like that, so it's easily identifiable. Okay, yes, I'll I'll do that once once I'm done screen sharing here. Okay, thank you. You're welcome, Sheila. All right, uh, thank you, Sheila. Um, then we have let's see, Dion. You should be able to talk now, Dion. Good evening again. Yes, I just unmuted. Um, I have a lot to say, and I'm going to actually submit some written comments to you. But in, in 2010, um, the previous boundaries that derived from the 2010 census were very problematic. And we had contention before the Committee of the Whole. Some adjustments were made after the War Aid Committee submitted their proposal, but they still weren't all remedied. And this proposal exacerbates some of the problems from that proposal. I'm a resident of the Bellevue neighborhood, which is the whole of Southwest east of the river. Mm -hmm. And we went down there to fight to keep our neighborhood intact, which is one of the principles of redistricting. And this proposal chops our neighborhood up and unnecessarily brings 8C pretty much through our whole neighborhood and our neighborhood is more divided in this proposal than it was in the previous one that was also problematic. So I really would like to see this um, go back to the drawing board and respect the neighborhood boundaries to keep us whole. And also um, at the very tip of Bellevue where South Capitol Street comes under the, off the highway, that very tip north of Xenia Street where Covenant Church is and the National Park Service property, that was previously part of ANC 8D. And when they restored the boundary in, after, in the last redistricting, they didn't bring that one piece back to us. But um, I, I really would like to see our neighborhood remain contiguous um, in a, a single ANC, um, yeah. And, and, and the way 8C cuts around and down, and then you got part of 8, it just makes no sense to me. And it disturbs our neighborhood cohesiveness. Thank you. Thank you, Dion. Can I ask, does your comment take into account that the primary driving force here is the need to balance the population across SMDs um, and therefore ANCs. So I guess to an extent, like mm -hmm. SMDs that are next to each other could probably move between um, ANCs that are next to each other. But does your comment mean that you don't like the ANC boundaries and you would just like to see, say, uh, I don't know, eight, just looking at this map, I and mean, I'm just using an example because it's on the screen, you would rather 8CO2 be part of 8D than 8C. Is that the essence of your comment or? The essence of my comment is that, is it, I have a lot of comments, but the essence of it is that, again, one of the principles of redistricting is that neighborhood boundaries should be respected. They're not absolute, but they need to be respected. And our neighborhood, I can't see the whole map right now. If you could scroll up a little bit so the whole of Bellevue appears. So yeah, that's better, that's better. A little bit up more. So Maggie, look, if, see if, how if, you have 
to the, Maggie, to the left, you have eight. Just one second, Dion. Uh -huh. Dion, one, one second. Maggie, if you could zoom in on that 8D0602 area, that's, uh, and, yeah, pull to the left a little bit. That That's, um, yeah. Yeah, it, should, it says Bellevue right on, on the map there. So I think if you look at 8D06, just for everyone who's not familiar, if you look under the, where it says 8D06, there's a split right next to the white box. That's where Alabama and I believe MLK uh, meet up and then head south mm -hmm. down to South Capitol Street, which sort of splits Bellevue. Um, going out towards Eastover. So we're looking at the red 8D06 area, the light blue 8CO2 area, and the, I don't know, sort of teal uh, 40 area uh, per, per Dion's comments. Um, now, please proceed, Dion. Okay, so everything under what is labeled now 8D06 should still be 8D. This is a this is a cohesive community from 8D06, what is now 8CO2, 8CO3, 8CO1. That's still a neighborhood, a continuous community, and it's broken up unnecessarily. It should not be broken up right now. They are in two wholly separate ANCs surrounded. You know, 8CO3 is basically usurping most of what was 8D06 or 8D period. 8D was from the river all the way over to um, South Capitol Street without end. And some of Washington Highlands on the other side of South Capitol Street, you know, was included in 8D, you know, to meet the population requirements. But Bellevue was not broken up. Okay. And it's being broken up now. I can, I can talk more with you about this offline and I can also send you my testimony from the last redistricting that addressed this very issue. Well, I, I think I, I see what you're saying or what the issue is. And it's not so much the way the boundaries of the SMDs are drawn, it's which SMDs are included in which ANC. Um, and that's, honestly, that's not a difficult fix. Uh, and, the, and, and the point is taken because if you can get the SMD boundaries right, you can allot general areas of SMDs that make sense to an ANC and where two ANCs touch, uh, it, it's not hard to realign there. So uh, point taken on that. And yes, please um, please feel free to send your, your, your testimony to the redistricting inbox. Um, and let's see, we have a panelist. Oh, Sheila. Yes, Chair Thompson. So I just wanted to piggyback on what Dion was saying. That's why I wanted to um, drill down into the actual street in that it, it does not make sense to have 8C where 8D used to be. But I wanted to offer the suggestion of because Dion has historical knowledge with this process for 8D, um, I wanted to offer if she, myself, and Maggie could sit and play with that portion because when I was doing 8D, my, I attempted to keep things harmonious at the same time balancing population numbers. It's hard. Um, but I get what Dion is saying, and I, you know, I agree. Given I've lived in 8D the majority of my life, um, never involved in the redistricting process until now. But at the time when there was an 8C, 8D, 8C in the neighbor, it was crazy um, to say the least. Um, so just wanted to offer that if the three of us could sit and try to work through that um, to balance to kind of balance that out. Uh, oh, okay. Um, so this is what I'll say. I, I, I understand the need to balance. So it looks like the boundaries of the SMDs are 
generally acceptable as I'm hearing comments on this. But it's more so the alignment of the SMDs to which ANCs that's an issue. I'll just say that when we started this meeting, um, the thought was we haven't received many map submissions since our last meeting. So this the the, the granularity of, of feedback um, may maybe maybe only uh, only um, manageable to a point given where we are in this process. Uh, and I just want to remind everyone that we have a deliverable due um, March 31st. Well, I think that's our next our next meeting is the 30th, so 30, 31st, April 1st, um, which is two weeks from Friday. If we can, and I, I'll just take a poll maybe towards the end of this meeting, uh, and we'll make a decision actually on whether we vote on what we have and sort of incorporate the feedback from this meeting into what we have, or if we wanna wait till the last meeting. Uh, and my issue or my concern is if we wait till the last meeting, we still have to submit a report. So um, I'm thinking that any feedback that we're gonna have in, in our committee submission needs to be teased out and um, sort of firmed up uh, before before our next meeting on March 31st, or gosh, March 30th. Um, that said, uh, Sheila, would that work? I'm, I'm, I'm trying to manage the expectations of changing or adjusting maps with the amount of time and just the final, final product we need to come up with in the next two weeks. I think, oh, absolutely, for sure. Um, I wasn't proposing that we prolong the process as I know we only have two weeks, but I don't, what I don't want to see happen is that we vote on a map and then what happened in 2010 happens again, there's protests and all of this stuff, which could happen. Um, I didn't, I haven't heard any other objections to other parts of the map. I think just so that we go into this process um, as as congruent with the community as possible, I think we should try. So I think I saw that Dion said she was amenable to it. If Maggie is amenable to it, we could meet, figure out something. And then maybe, you know, I don't know what the process, maybe you can call a special meeting and we look at that so that we're still in line with time, but absolutely getting this worked out prior to our next meeting. All right um special meeting okay that's a thought uh let's see Th thank you sheila um let's see we have another oh commissioner white hi i'm chair thank you maggie so much for putting together this map um and taking the time to share with us i would i was um wondering is is how can is there any way you say you emailed it to the Ward a email, Brian, could you forward that to us so we can kind of open it and look a very a little bit closer at it while we're on this call? Because I, you know, from looking at it right here, I, I really can't see, you know, the can't really dig in and see it. And I want to just say I, I like the comment that um Sheila had that maybe we can have a special meeting because I don't think that um we have enough enough consensus or or granular granularity, quite um frankly. To be able to vote tonight um but i think if a, a group went like sheila and some other people um <clears throat> say this is the map we're going to update and kind of use it try to update and bring back for a vote or have that with one or two maps for a vote and have a meeting next week or something would be ideal but can you share that that map that maggie has with us somehow yeah so um, I'm gonna, oh if i could jump in i'm gonna um share it within the esri tool um I, that's why I stopped sharing the screen so I can figure that out um, on my okay. end. Now, I'll just uh, let folks in the chat know once that's kind of up and available to be viewed and probably, you know, kind of tweaked as, as allowed. Okay. Uh, thank you, Commissioner White. Um, let's see, we have another. 
made a you comment can... in the chat too, um, Chair Thompson. Well, is your and hand there... up or from the last comment or is this a new comment? It was part two of that comment. I didn't get to finish. I had accidentally <laughs> sent the Zoom away and had to figure out how to pull it back up on my computer. Um, it was just no, this something... is Commissioner White. This is Dion who has her hand up. Oh, I had still had mine up. I, maybe I'll go after Dion. Oh. <laughs> All right, she took. No, it that was a previous hand raise. I'm sorry, I lowered. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. All right, Commissioner White. I was just going to say, as we are, you know, some folks are going to go back and look at the exact neighborhoods. Would it be? It would would be helpful to try to get okay. These are the neighborhood boundaries because you know, and the Esri tool doesn't give you the exact neighborhood boundaries, so that can help with. Um, drawing it for folks so they know these are the neighborhood boundaries that we want to keep these neighborhoods together. So thinking about Bellevue and um, Woodland and um, Randall Heights and other, other neighborhoods that we just want to keep together to avoid this, the issues before, if maybe we can make that list tonight so that folks know and can you know have that information when they meet again. So uh, the Office of Planning, I believe Joy sent out, um, the neighborhood boundaries map after our second or our third meeting. And I do know that Wanda was able to send that to everyone on the committee. So check your inbox for that um, neighborhood boundaries um, map. Um, okay. That being said, uh, I am going to share my screen in just a second, once I get it pulled up. Mr. Um, Mr. Chairman, there's an email about um, Andrew. Um, I emailed a map to the email, but haven't known about the button to share the plan with everyone. Just shared it, just shared it that way too. Do you see that comment? If somebody want, maybe want to address that? I don't see If we saw that email in the inbox. In the inbox? Oh. I mean, I'm sorry, okay. in the chat, my apologies. But he said that he sent it in the email, so I'm not sure if you might want to give him okay. speaking ability to see where he emailed his map. Right, Andrew. Uh, let me let's see if we can just get you to speak, Andrew. Uh, you should be able to unmute now. Andrew Bosi. Okay, there. Oh, how about now? Oh, it's, it's for whatever reason, this is not allowing me to. I, I think I got it. Oh, okay, great. <laughs> Cut this appearing on me. Um, yeah, I sent the, I sent a, some screenshots and I think I had a Twitter thread on my map uh, to the redistrict board eight ANC uh, email address. I think it might've been in February, maybe it was. Yeah, probably in February. Um, and I, uh, I didn't know if I could share the map through Esri, which would obviously be better than screenshots. Um, I just did that probably five, 10 minutes ago. Um, so hopefully you all can now access it in Esri. I don't fully know how that works, but happy to help. Mr. Bossy, what did you name your map? I'm in Esri right now. This is, I can see it. <laughs> it's called uh, Boss 8 hyphen 1. Boss 8 hyphen 1. I also have an 8 hyphen 2 I also shared, but that one isn't quite as clean. Boss. Now, I'll, I'll say these aren't you know definitive. This is the way it should be done, but maybe they're ideas to help help in developing maps. I know it does address the Bellevue comment. It keeps Bellevue continuous, contiguous. Okay. Uh, I see it, uh, Andrew. Thank you. Thank you. Matter of fact, you have a whole bunch of them. Oh, that's from the uh, ward redistricting. Yeah, they're in there too. <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. All right. Let me see if I can pull it up and then maybe screen share from my screen. Um, And then we can all discuss. So boss eight from shared plans, everyone.
and I'll, I won't keep chiming in too much, but I'll say 8-1 was kind of my starting from an empty slate, drawing everything from scratch. And I will be first to admit, I don't necessarily know every community or the commissioners and the dynamics. They could be horrible. Um, 8-2 used the existing borders a little bit more and tried to have smaller changes. Okay. But that was yeah, that was much harder because there's a lot of growth in certain spots and small changes don't quite work that way. I have it pulled up now. Let me see if I can uh, zoom, share my screen. There it is. All right. Can everyone see everything on my screen or just the... <laughs> Can anyone, can you all see my screen? Yes. Okay, all right. Uh, well then, let me see if I can, well, Andrew, if you wanna speak to your thoughts on this, this map. Yeah, so I'll first call out, I had two bugs with this where one couple tracks had a positive, I think, 3,000 population. Another one had negative 3,000 population. You'll see one of them at the top right. It's called bugged negative 3,000. Uh, there's another one out there that has a plus 3,000. I think it was a Navy Yard, um, or maybe it was down at the south end. But everything else should be fine. I couldn't figure out what was going on with that bug. Um, so this is, which one is this one? Is this 8-1 or 8-2? It's 8-2. Is... Two. Um, so I think it tried to keep a... Uh, um, try to keep the ANCs somewhat contiguous uh, and not quite as kind of meandering as they do today. It used Sweetland Parkway also as a hard border um, and tried to keep, I think, two north, three south, and then one in Navy Yard. Um, I thought that the comments or the, the ideas last time about Navy Yard spanning the river were good, also where there was feedback against possibly doing that. I'm ambivalent, not trying to make a statement one way or another with this. Um, but if you go down toward the south, I know we just had those comments about Bellevue. Uh, actually, I forget what I did in this draft. I know my first draft had Bellevue kept together. Um, if you pan uh, southward at all. Uh, well, maybe it does. It might split. <laughs> so those comments earlier um, may still be relevant for this draft. Um, like I said, this, this one tried to reflect the borders as closely as I could, recognizing the population has shifted around um, and that you know forces you to shift the border somewhat as well. Um, but try to keep at least some cohesiveness to where these ANCs break. Um, I think one of my biggest questions, and again, this is my lack of knowledge with the dynamics of these ANCs, is the role of Bowling Air Force Base and the other stuff on the west side of the parkway. Um, I don't know if it's an issue having SMDs substantially formed by those areas, or if it's not an issue, I just don't know. And I'm obviously interested if there's feedback on that. I have thoughts, but I'd love to hear from anyone else. Um, your thoughts on Andrew's question about Bowling Air Force Base? Uh, well, let's see. Now I can't see everything. Uh, I think Dion is, your hands up. Dion, can you speak? I just got the unmute button. All right. um, thank you. Um, bowling has always had been part of SMDs within the ANC, the respective ANCs, because they, even if they're not registered to vote here in DC, they are considered residents for the purpose of the census. And being that bowling is in Southwest and the Bellevue neighborhood is the whole of Southwest east of the river, they are considered, that, that land area is considered part of Bellevue, the Bellevue neighborhood. It's a subdivision, bowling is a subdivision of Bellevue. But um, yeah, they, are, they do have, they are part of S, respective s and Ds, and they do. Um, sometimes they actually participate in the ANCs, but for the most part, they don't. Oh, okay. Andrew, does does that help? Yeah. Um, uh, so as you can see, that I think it's 8B08, and I think 2A07 has some east of the parkway <laughs> residents as well. But 8B08 is primarily west of the parkway. That's where if they're generally not really participating, you could have an unseated SMD. 
could be an issue. Um, and also recognizing if, if, if you consider that area part of Bellevue, I mean, the SMDs can swap around ANCs. You can shift those borders around pretty easily as long as you're not making one hugely big, the other hugely small. Um, Historically, they've been combined into existing SMDs within Bellevue. So the north part would be part of what is currently 8D07. Um, and as you move down, you know, as you move south, they would be a part of whatever respective ANC is on the other side of um, 295 from them. Excellent. They've never had a single uh, member district that was wholly contained in, in bowling. <coughs> Andrew, uh, let me ask, I see that several of your, a, your SMDs, like 8A07, 8B08, 8A05, 8A02, they exceed the plus or minus five, plus or minus five percent, i.e., 19 to 2100 residents per SMD. And you can do that, but you need to have a reason why. Do you have a reason why? That was the reason is when I said this one wasn't quite finished, uh, that my first draft okay. is a little more polished. This one, not quite there yet. So <laughs> that's the reason. Not a good one. Okay. All right. Um, well, uh, um, thank you, th thank you for sharing. What would you say are the core takeaways of this map? Just just so that we don't miss the big picture here. I think this one tried to keep some of the borders a little bit more cl closer to where they are today, especially north of the Parkway, um, uh, north of Sweetland Parkway. I think they're very close to what the, out there today. Um, that's in the other draft, uh, Boss Eight Hyphen One took a more, like I said, blank slate approach. Um, it actually keeps the stuff north of Sweetland a little bit more the same again, but uh, south of Sweetland, things took a, a different arrangement, which I like, but I don't know if others would or won't. Okay, all right. So you focused on making sure that south of the Sweetland Parkway uh, was a bit more orderly for your intended purposes. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank sir. you very much. All right. Uh, Dion, is your hand up again or? Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> All right. I am going to stop sharing this and we are going to go back into our chat. I'm sure I'm missing something in either the Q&A or the chat. Oh, I just opened uh something else. Anyway, um, well, I, it, it sounds like, it sounds like uh, keeping neighborhoods together, particularly south of the Suitland Parkway is the feedback for a final map that we have yet to take into account. I'm not hearing any other major themes? Um, so then I will just ask now for, and this is for our nine panelists that are here. If we can just, um, I mean, I can, we, we can do a vote and see if we can prepare a final map based on what we have that takes into account the feedback we've gotten, plus, um, I guess, Maggie and Dion's discussion from earlier, or do we wanna shove this all into the last meeting? And the reason I say that is because there's a lot of work to, done, to, to be done during and at the last meeting, more so after we decide on a final map. So, if we are not going to vote tonight, I need a commitment that we do that work. Uh, that being said, i uh, just like to go around the panelists and ask for a vote on if we can vote on a final map taking in, in the last two weeks, the additional feedback we've received tonight. Um, so, uh, I'm going to ask for, I guess, an I or nay vote 
on whether we will have a final vote this evening. And since there are none of us, I will start with um, the top left of my screen, uh, Commissioner White. Mr. Chairman, point of clarification. Yes. Uh, have we seen a map that we are voting on tonight? We've seen we've seen Maggie's map. I have a map, but I think we've all agreed that. So in, in the context of uh, Maggie's map and Mr. Bosi's map, there are aspects of those maps that don't meet the baseline requirements for being plus or minus 5%. But those are tweaks that we can make, keeping in mind that we need to keep neighborhood boundaries whole. Um, now I can present the map that I have that does meet that, but I don't want my map to sway everyone's decision-making. Um, and it's only the con in the context of all the feedback we've gotten up until this meeting. Okay. All right, thank you, Mr. Chairman. So, uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a point of question. Well. Troy, are you still speaking? There's a female voice. Oh, that was me. Um, oh, okay. Chairman, can you hear me? Yes, all right. So just a point of clarification. Um, so is there an option to have an additional meeting in between today and our final meeting to come back and discuss the work that needs to be done on a map? There or, are we saying, or are we saying we're not gonna have an additional meeting and our final meeting or next to final meeting is the only option? So there is an additional meeting. Uh, I can't chair that meeting. That's why I'm not offering that. But uh, you know, we're all equal committee members here. So you said there is a final one. I'm you just confused me. I know we have one on the thirtieth. Yeah. What I'm saying. What I'm saying is, is there an opportunity to have another meeting before the thirtieth to? Because you gave us homework, if if myself and I'm just going to use the the AD portion, if myself, Maggie, and Dion are going to sit and try to figure this out, we have to do that, and then come back and present to you all. And it sounds like Jamila on the eight on the other end, they might need to do the same. Is there an opportunity to have another meeting before the thirtieth so that we can, hey, this is the work that was done, and here's kind of the final scheme of what the thinking was to talk about it then and not wait until our last meeting uh that was the purpose of this meeting and since we don't have that feedback at this meeting i can't offer that personally um i understand this is important to everyone but the meeting schedule was meeting five we were going to decide what to move on to to meeting six we didn't have a lot of feedback going into meeting five so the decision is amongst essentially maggie's um mr bosey's uh I, I guess troy's and the map that and i was just going to put these all on the screen and we were going to vote on them but i can't offer a fit a I can't offer a total of seven meetings, no. Okay. Um, and, and I'm not to belabor this. Is it a timing issue or? Um... Uh, it's, a, it's, it's a work issue. Okay. <laughs> Is, there's a lot of work that goes. Sorry, Alexa was talking. Sorry about that. Uh, <laughs> um, it, it, there's a work issue. Like, ultimately, the goal here is to produce a map of, um, you know, the aggregate input of our committee. And there's a structure that has to go with that. So the feedback that's being asked or offered for now, while we're willing to incorporate it in, all of the maps that we needed to be making decisions on needed to be presented for this meeting so that we can have a final meeting to produce the report. 
And if we have another meeting, that would be meeting six and the report still needs to be produced. I'm looking at, uh, gosh, we're, we're an hour and 17 minutes into the current meeting and we're, we're still having this discussion. So in order to maintain the schedule that we set, um, it's not fair to, you know, those of us who have followed the schedule to uh, add another meeting and more so for my personal schedule, I can't commit to that. Uh, just because, you know, uh, as you all know, I'm also an ANC commissioner. Um, so, so I won't belabor I won't belabor it any further. I hear you. I, I think we all have busy schedules, and I'm I am definitely not trying to be a proponent of another meeting. I get it, but maps were presented and we have questions from those maps. Like I'd like to see your map because yours might be better than Maggie's. Um, oh sure, yeah, yeah. I, right. I, I I intend to present, but right. and so we're we've keeping the schedule is the point. Okay. Oh, okay. Like this is why we 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 put out um, a project schedule to start back in January is to know when these meetings were going to happen. Um, and what, absolutely, what, but with projects, the things ha things happen which negate possibly having to add something in because I think we've gotten great feedback tonight. But I'm not going to belabor it anymore. I know where my vote is. Um, I won't belabor it anymore, Mr. Okay. President. Um, I'm sorry, I'm driving, so I can't raise my hand. So my phone is <laughs> jumping in. But um, is it possible then, um, I think the comments are really great and to avoid having, and while there will be hearings at the council where people can give additional feedback, I'm just not understanding the why we would not be able to still vote on the added changes if the work is going to be done with between now and the 30th meeting we can still present that particular map and have it presented and voted on at our last meeting. Um, so I'm not understanding the need for another one because I, I see that the work will be done. It sounds like there are people that's committed to doing the work. So Sheila, for Sheila, and I think um, Dion, is there um, any reason you think that we wouldn't be able to vote on it on the last meeting date? No, no, no. I'm not saying that we can't. No, no, no. And maybe I misspoke. I'm not saying that we can't vote on it on the last meeting day. I was just thinking that the I didn't. I was just thinking that we would just present to the to the body and give them time to digest. But if that's the case and folks want to wait until the last meeting, that's fine. I'm. I wasn't saying that we could not vote it on the last meeting. I was just trying to be considerate of folks to say, and not, you know, I guess laying it out on them at the last meeting if there were still issues and contention that you know we'd be belaboring that last meeting. That was it. So no. Nope. I, I would just. I would just ask that the committee members and the residents um, be prepared to have a longer meeting because I'm certain there would be more question, more edits, as people are beginning to now jump in the meeting. Then we may very well have new members or members that just came for the first time at our 30th meeting that we will also have to maybe incorporate some of their ideas and suggestions. So um, in order to keep the schedule, I think I, I support the, the chairman on this, is let's try to keep what we have and let's bring it all together on the 30th. Thank you, Wanda. Um, yeah, like, just want to remind everyone that not only do we need to have a final map, there is a report. So basically, you know, if it's a four-sided ANC, you need to be able to list out what the four sides of those ANCs are. The report is, is, is a bit detailed. And so us having a meeting two weeks from the day, knowing that we have to produce a detailed report based on that two days later, um, we've, we, we set the schedule with all of that in mind. Now, my goal this evening was to vote on what we have, incorporate final feedback into that and discuss the report at the final meeting. But uh, let's just get to it, to a vote to see um, if we can move forward uh, and 
this is, I, I will show the map that I've incorporated all the feedback into thus far. Um, if we can go ahead and vote on one of the maps we've seen tonight, plus the map that I'll show in a minute. But I wanna have this now to see, see how to manage the remainder of our time uh, over the next 38 minutes or so. So um, I will say uh, all in favor of holding a final map vote tonight, say aye, and I'll start with, uh, with, with Maggie. Mr. Chair, I actually have a point of clarification um, before right. voting, if possible. Okay. Um, so if if the vote ends up going that we decide to um, postpone the final vote until um, our final meeting on the 30th, um, I guess, could you speak to what like an intermediary timeline would look like? Would it be, you know, if, you know, say Sheila, Dion, and I are able to connect within the next week, um, getting a map with tweaks out to the, the committee members um, and, and kind of thinking about it a little bit too, would it be helpful if there's like a, because, you know, if we wanted to do like a walkthrough with narration on Zoom um, to, to explain any um, changes and send that around as like a video or MP4 file um, such that committee members could uh, share feedback ahead of that final vote and hopefully um, mitigate any lengthy discussions on that and so we can devote most of the meeting on the 30th to developing that report i'm fine with that but i'd like to note that uh i guess by the guidelines set by the city and also uh by the council member all of our meetings are supposed to be publicly held so if that were to be the case i, I don't think that would keep within that spirit and that's why Essentially, my backup plan, if we vote no on this, is we're going to vote on whatever maps we have at the start of that meeting. And whatever map gets the greatest, <laughs> gets the most votes, that's the one we're going to prepare a report on. Um, because the majority of that meeting will be about the report and eventually moving to produce that report uh, for the following Friday, two days later. Uh, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that because that basically will cause us to rush and make mistakes, which would, you know, negate our efforts thus far. Mr. Um, President, I have a point of clarity. Yes, ma'am. If voting for the, a map tonight, does that preclude the input that we received tonight? It does not. It does not. Okay. Okay. Got it. Basically, Thanks. we would, we would ask, uh, we we would ask th that you know the trust be placed in us to to make it right based on the feedback that we have. Got um, it. Perfect. Okay, thank you for that. Uh, yes, yes, ma'am. Um, so, any further requests for clarification on how we're going to move forward from here? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I think it would be great if we see your map. Uh, Sure. No, we're, we're going <laughs> to, I, like I said, I didn't want my map to be the focus of this meeting. So I want to see if we're even going to have a vote tonight. So I will say, um, but Mr. Chair, we can't vote if you don't see all of the I maps. Know. We're not voting yes. on a map. We're voting on vote. whether we're going to vote tonight. But what are we voting on then? Oh, right. We're voting on whether we are going to vote after I show the map. On a map, so, so one of the yes. four maps. Down. Yes, one of the four maps, yes. Uh, the, so we are uh, voting on that. Okay. But then I'd like to see your map first before I can decide whether or not I'm going to vote on a map. <laughs> uh, <laughs> We're not yes. voting on my map. We're voting on one, all four maps. But I can't, but I can't, how can I vote on all four maps if I haven't seen all four maps? I can't do that if I haven't seen all four maps, is what I'm saying. It doesn't change anything, Sheila. I'll show you the map. It does. For, I, I it need does to for, the time. Thank you. Um, all in favor of voting on a final map tonight, say aye. And I'll start with Maggie.
Hello? I Yes, with the caveat that we can adjust based on feedback prior to next meeting. Yes, ma'am, that's the intent. Troy? Yes, let's move forward. Uh, Commissioner White? No, I don't feel comfortable voting on the map. Uh, Ms. Mason? Yes. Vice Chair Coates? Yes. Commissioner Clark? Yes. Sheila? No. Wanda? I'm a non-voting member. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that's, that's correct. And I'll say yes. Um, so I have that vote as uh, two, three, six to two. And we are going to vote on the final map tonight of the four that we have. And we will still make tweaks between now and the next meeting based on that feedback. But those tweaks will only be to the map we decide on tonight. Mr. Chairman, a friendly amendment. Um, I wouldn't call it a final map. I would call it a draft. Okay, a draft. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> correct. Sorry, sorry for that. Yeah, it, it's still a draft at, after the night but it's the baseline for what we're going to submit and ultimately write a report on in our sixth meeting. Agreed. Thank you, sir. All right. Uh, so let me switch back over to the redistricting the saved maps open. I'm opening on my screen so that I can then share uh, with you in just a second. All right, and I'm going to screen share. Before I do, I see we have Dion and Ja, I see we have your comments. I think we just addressed them uh, with that vote. So I'm gonna go ahead and screen share and explain um, the best efforts that I had from our last conversation. Is there a bunch of stuff on my screen or can you just see the map? Because I have a bunch of Zoom windows on my screen. Just the map. Okay, all right. All right. So uh, this map is based on the feedback we've gotten either through redistricting the inbox or through um, our comments in the last four meetings and acknowledging that it is one of the three maps that we have, four maps that we've seen tonight on which we will end up voting to then make tweaks to in, in, uh, in providing a final map at the uh, sixth meeting for a redistricting report. Um, and, and, you know, this isn't gospel by any means. This is only our recommendation to the council. And there will be plenty of opportunity to testify um, at the council regarding these maps uh, and, and just ultimately what we accept as our ANC maps going forward for the next 10 years. Um, and I'll start here at the Navy Yard or the top of Ward 8. Uh, this, because of the Esri tool, we still can't include the notch, but we agreed at the last meeting that there will be a notch. And the goal here is to mostly create, I believe we I created four, nine, SMD ANCs in Ward 8, and I believe two seven SMD ANCs in Ward 8. Uh, so the top, top left corner is the notch. And based on the numbers, I believe we will have two SMDs coming out of that area. Um, as we can see, uh, 
there are nine total in ANC 8A. Uh, we kept the idea of having a two-sided riverfront area that includes, um, I guess, a good portion of the current ANC 8A. I mean, and you know, the naming doesn't have to be the same. We're mostly uh, concerned with boundaries here. Uh, a few in a few instances, such as in 8A04, 8A05, as they're noted here on the screen, we did have to exceed the um, plus or minus five percent by a small number. But uh, I, I think a few people have said it here. This is not an easy task to try to keep everyone within 1900 to 2100 uh, residents in all of these maps. Um, moving on down. Uh, the, the thinking here, I'm sorry, on the east of the river portion of this top, uh, I guess, 8A um, map is to provide a sort of uh, development wary, but also residential uh, approach to a ANC on both sides. And noting the MLK, and Good Hope Road corridors uh, in that there would be, let's see, we have four, we would have four um, commissioners, SMDs east of the river and five west of the river, remembering the two here going in the notch for a total of nine uh, ANCs. Moving here to 8B, keeping the character of historic Anacostia. So this line, if you can see my screen, the cursor running along it runs up Good Hope, Good Hope Road, and it keeps the core of Anacostia all in what is an ANC 8B while allowing for inputs on development along the Good Hope Road corridor and the MLK corridor on both sides. Um, all of this would then be bounded by the Suitland Parkway. Now note, uh, Berry Farm and the reason why 8B07 is so large is because we can't account for population that may be coming. We have to account for what is there. And in that, um, we were able, I was able to include a Berry Farm north end of Bowling Air Force Base 8B07 SMD. Uh, not, noting that that also abuts the development that's coming on the bridge district on the south end of the bridge district, uh, say around Anacostia Metro, et cetera. And this allows um, 8A and 8B to have a focus on the business and development areas around MLK and along the Suitland Parkway, um, which uh, I think we're thinking about development at what is Colombian Quarter or what, what was called Colombian Quarter at one point. Um, moving along to 8C here, uh, keeping the numbers just about even across the SMDs. Now, uh, like I said, the big thing to remember is the naming, whether it's one through seven or you know, seven through one or BC, that doesn't really matter. It's, it's about having boundaries that work for our task in redistricting. Um, and so you have Skyland, you have Woodland, Garfield Heights, et cetera, over here forming the core of 8C, which then uh, crosses the Suitland Parkway and finishes up in a nine member or nine SMD ANC 8C representing the easternmost half of Ward 8. Uh, coming back here into the central core of Ward 8, you have an 8D that, um, that makes up, 8D makes up the core of this area. And gosh, somebody tell me what this boundary line is. It was a neat boundary line, but I believe this is the bottom of the, where the old St. Elizabeth's campus used to be. Uh, coming up both sides of MLK over to uh, the intersection of uh, MLK, Good Hope, South Capitol, et cetera. Um, moving on to, um, moving on to the southern end of Ward 8 and having a 
8B08, 8B07. I mean, like I said, the boundaries make sense, which A and C they're in, uh, open to discussion, but the goal here was to keep uh, the side of um, the other end of Bowling Air Force Base connected to the top end and therefore to 8B. I know that makes for a geographically huge SMD, but population wise and in terms of neighborhood character, what happens uh, east versus west of uh, the Anacostia Freeway, um, neighborhood characteristics are different. Uh, coming on down to the southern end of Ward 8, we have, um, we have 80. And although it doesn't necessarily, uh, you know, the goal here or the boundaries here for the SMDs are based on population, it does speak, speak to Dion's desire uh, recommendation that we keep neighborhoods whole. And this forms a commission, an 80 commission out of Bellevue, uh, Washington Highlands, the area towards the southernmost area of uh, Ward 8 going out towards Eastover. Uh, there is a portion of 8B that crosses over here, but this is largely um, unpopulated and therefore an ANC that crosses over to this area wouldn't really affect um, you know, community issues, voting, that type of thing. Um, and this is, this is what, uh, you know, based on the feedback that we gotten at the meetings and whatnot, uh, I, I thought it made sense, um, but it's one of four maps. And so I, I would ask that, uh, let's see if you have any questions. Let's see, we, it's uh, 7, 7.40 now. Give it a few minutes to have questions. And then I uh, think the eight of us still on, we'll go ahead and um, vote on one of these, one of these maps as a um, final, semi-final draft to incorporate the remainder of, um, the, the remainder of our comments into what we will write the report on in our next meeting. Uh, so that said, I don't know. Uh, let me see if I can, I see one of our panelists has their hand up. Sheila, okay. Uh, you can unmute, go ahead. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a couple clarifying questions. Um, oh, I'm sorry. So 8E moves down to the southern end because of the notch that's at the top end because you had you added in up there. I'm just trying to understand the move in S and D's. That's the first question. Is that the reason? So when you say move in S and D's, the name 80 could be 8A. That doesn't, I mean, if, if the question is about what the area we're looking at at the southern end of Ward 8 is called by A and C, um, mm -hmm. there was no strong reasoning other than I started with A and ended up with E as I moved south, starting at the top. Uh, but, you know, th 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 that's all I have. The notch doesn't affect anything going on in the rest of the ward. It's just a, a point of memory that I started off with that we're adding two SMDs out of that notch to then form what would be a new 8A commission that runs along both sides of the Ward 8 uh, riverfront and also incorporates development areas as well as a number of commissioners from both sides of the river into a nine member commission. Yeah, I think so. I mean, it, I think we are saying um, the same thing in that it just moved things up because where 8B used to be, it's now 8E. You didn't create another commission. You added numbers and that just moved things up. That's, I think we said the same thing. Can you scroll back down to the southern part for me, please? Okay. So where Bellevue is, Instead of that being a D, that's now a, all of this area is now a E. A E, yes, except for this small area right here. And this, 
I, this area, if you can see my cursor, this mm -hmm. area is the densest part of Ward 8. I mean, there's just no way to think to keep boundaries contiguous and not violate the plus or minus 5% numbers. And I, I didn't get it perfect, like say ADOA. Right. There's a way to take this out, but this, this area here, is a, there's a lot of people that live here and it makes no sense to separate them from this area. So when you try to balance having the population numbers match up, with the characteristics of the neighborhood, this right. is the best that I could come up with. And please believe me, I, I spent a good amount of time on this. Oh, no, uh, no, I agree. Because even when I tried to do it, it was hard as heck trying to keep under that 2100. So trust me, I totally understand. And so then we have 8B to the left because you were trying to keep them connected. Yeah, so I I didn't think it was fair to the those on Bowling Air Force Base to split them. So just based on how the population is built, this this particular S, um, census tract here, where my cursor is, is mm -hmm. the single most populous area on Bowling Air Force Base, and it either had to be up here or down here, and it was going to make the population off for one of these two areas. So I tried to keep eight B O eight within the population parameters and 8B09, just like 8008 will be a bit outside of those parameters. 8004 is a bit outside too. Okay. Okay, I think that's all I have for the moment. So I'm sure something else will come up, but thank you. <laughs> all right. Um, Panelists, any other questions on the map that I just presented? Brian, can you scroll back up to 8A and zoom in a little bit? There we go. Uh, zoom in. Which part, east or west of the river? West, or east, east my bad. Just go a little, yeah. So that's... Can I can I'm trying to see the whole boundary for eight A O four? Could you zoom out a little bit so I could see that whole boundary for eight A O four? So you're proposing eight A O four will go up will be the connector one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Do we know um? Brian, do you know what's the population breakdown at 2100? Is it 1,000 on the west and 1,000 on the east, or is it more west? Oh, and ask, ask that a different way. OK, so 8A04? Yep. From how I'm seeing it, um, it looks like it crosses both into east of the river a little bit. You see? Right, right, right. Uh, I will say offhand that a majority of the population is east of the river going from, I guess, the Shannon Place, Howard Road area, all the way back around. Most of this area in what's shown as 8804 west of the river, a lot of it is the actual still functioning government Navy Yard. So okay. while there's space here, um, most of it is not populated. Okay, so it's that small area and then it comes over to parts of Fairlawn and is it, and then on the other side of the freeway, okay. Can someone mute um, music? <laughs> uh, Brian, this is Troy. I don't know if uh, Commissioner White has done or not, but I'll, I'm standing by. Go ahead, Troy. A couple things. One, um, so it looks like we have about two and a half districts up in the Navy Yard Notch uh, in Ward 6. And I'm sorry, my eyes are bad as I've gotten older here, but it looks like you have 8A07. What's being identified as 8A07 at 2063 in terms of population? Yes. Okay, so we have two and a half districts there. This was the problem I had earlier is I have about 700 people just kind of hanging out. 
and not quite sure where to put them. <laughs> uh, and the numbers, you know, it would be a really big SMD um, otherwise if we were to add them all into or, or try to split them, maybe try to split the seven, like maybe 350 between the two SMDs that are there. But the point is, is we're going to definitely be over that number, uh, the average number. Right, right, right. That 700, if you look at the other areas, there, there's no place to make it, uh, make a third SMD. And there's no place to sort of add that many people on top of the parameters of the other numbers. So we just accept it since we're allowing the notch to come in from Ward 6 anyway, we'll just have to split those numbers such that they fit west of, uh, well, north of 8A05 and west of 8A07 into two, uh, they'll, they'll just have to deviate. Yeah, because looking at this and even the work that I did, like, you know, the our work is done in terms of what a Ward 8 would be, but the Ward 6 part is, is what's tricky. Um, and so, okay. And then down below, you had uh, I, just a couple of things. I want to caution against the um, I, having one commissioner, although I, I guess as precedent, we have a commissioner at the DC jail, for example, that just at this point represent just a jail. Um, but I, you know, to Dion's point, I don't know if Dion is still on, certainly she can speak to this, but you know, I I rarely think that you're going to have a commissioner coming out of Bowling Air Force Base uh, to sit on either eight uh, B or eight. I think there's another one further down. Um, and so we you, there's you know, actually I, three along three. Bowling. Let me see if I can pull. Hmm. So there's oh seven oh eight and Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, there's only two. O9, okay. O9 would likely be represented from right. in this area. The O9 makes sense. The O8 and O7, I unless that's the that comes out into Berry Farm. Okay, so maybe you got that. Uh, but I guess the other one there, um, you likely listen, I think it's a great idea, but I don't know if you'll get a commissioner out of the base. Um I mean, per perhaps, um, and acknowledging that, you know, our, our men and women in uniform, um, you know, uh, are, are just as well to represent the issues that are unique to the base, uh, particularly with this 8B08 right in the middle, um, just as well to have that opportunity as any of the rest of the neighborhoods, if you will, in Ward 8. I mean, if you look at Bowling Air Force Base, you can consider the whole thing a neighborhood uh, relative to character, but uh, it's just too big to all be one SMD. Um, so this is the best split that I could hope for yeah. in, in terms of giving them that opportunity. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with what, what you are proposing. I, I just, I'm thinking about mechanically, like how does it work? Like if no one gets elected, then it's just a, a vacant seat. Um, I, I can think of, I think Georgetown University, I think they actually, the ANC that has Georgetown, they have a set aside seat for a student there. Um, so that, I don't know, just mechanically how this will work is just something that I just wanted to just put out there um, in terms of how that person will be seated um, if they are 100% based people. What I've found that most of them do not have DC IDs, they're not registered to vote here. Um, as I'm a, on a school, I'm on a, you know, a board for school on base. And so, um, but they are, as previously noted, they are Ward 8 DC residents. And so, um, anyway, I, I just wanted to just uh, posit that with you and with the team as we think it through. But overall, sir, I mean, this looks great. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I also was thinking about you know, the large number of SMDs and just how large say 8B would be in this case. Part of uh, that is, you know, as we grow in population, as our lives just become more busier, et cetera, the ability to execute the multiple core functions 
uh, have executive officers that are available in number, the smaller the SM, I mean, the ANC you have, the less, you know, chance you have of, you know, thoroughly filling out those executive officer roles. So by having, um, you know, the Northern 8B07, which would have, you know, touched whatever Berry Farm becomes, even if there's no other participation from the, the rest of Bowling Air Force Base, that still allows for seven commissioners guaranteed, much less eight when you talk about 8B09 and how it uh, crosses back over the freeway uh, down here um, off of Malcolm X. And then, you know, like I said, 8B08, if someone is going to have a bowling Air Force base military perspective, uh, most of this SM, this entire SMD is on bowling and, you know, we should allow for at least that possibility to, uh, you know, let those voices be heard. And this is, like I said, the densest part of Bowling Air Force Base. The, the largest population is right here in this 8B08 area. So um, that, that was the thinking there. But the goal of the larger ANCs is to make sure that the executive roles and the voices are filled out given the character of everything that's being represented, particularly in 8A and, um, and, and 8B. Uh, that being said, I, I think there's no more comments. Um, we have seven minutes left in the meeting. I'd like to go ahead and vote. Um, now, I will do it this way. I will just, uh, we have this one open. I can zoom out, zoom in. I can look up Maggie's um, map, zoom out, zoom in on that one, and we will... I will list them all out and I'll say like, um, <laughs> I mean, we'll just have to go by name. Maggie's map, all in favor, aye. Or everyone has to say aye to something. So <laughs> we'll just, we'll list them out and see how many yeses we get for each map, all right? So uh, is anyone, can I take this map down? Anyone object to that? All right, um, so we'll go and open B O S S S I. Oh, shared plans, everyone. I'm in the wrong folder. Okay. Um, and Drew, do we want to pull up the boss eight one or boss eight two map? Do I need to un unmute you? There you go. You should be able to talk. Nope. All right. There we go. There we go. Uh, there are two different maps. I mean, north of Sweetland, they're pretty similar, but south of Sweetland, they're pretty different. Um, I think 8.1 is a little more polished, but a little bit more know, different. <laughs> uh, okay. 8.2, eight yeah, not quite polished, but probably a little bit more familiar to many. All right. Well, we'll, we'll just open both. Um, uh, so I put links to PDFs of both also in the chat. If anyone wants to open those up, you can see on your own. Oh, great. Great, great. Okay. Thank you for doing that. I'll still um, open these up. So uh, this is boss eight one, or boss eight two coming. Um, so this is boss eight one. Um, see, you've added in eight F here. Uh, the numbers like. Numbers are, are, are a bit high in places, but I uh, do see how it's a bit more polished, like you said, than the other map. Um, and to point out here, this 8A08 is 1,100 residents short of an SMD. That is actually correct. There's a bug that has a negative 3,000. So okay. uh, 
that's not negative population there. Okay. So you say it's negative 3,000. Does that, okay. I yeah, see that's the, the other side of that bug. <laughs> but those, I believe, both have the, the right number. They're in the right range. Navy Yard was just kind of waved off because the notch missing. Uh, there's more work that has to be done in Navy Yard, no matter what you do. So 1154 is the right number for this area here? No, the real number is about 2,000 uh, okay. for both of them. All right. So you were able to balance population then? Yeah. Generally speaking. All right. Well, except for uh, right. a, a to 8F. All right. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll take that into account. Um, can I, anyone object to me taking this map down and going to Andrew's second map? Okay. Yes. Oh, shared plans. Everyone lost a two. All right. Uh, let me zoom in a bit. And just again, keeping in mind, everyone, that the name of the location does not matter so much as uh, whether the commissions are kept together in a way that makes sense for neighborhoods and whether we are balancing population as required. So uh, there's that bug again. Don't worry about that. We'll, Andrew, I'll take your word for it that otherwise the numbers do add up um accordingly we've been a, went a bit over in 8co1 but generally speaking looking good 8co7 is a is a bit over but not not too much um yeah, the 8ao2 is the bigger issue um there's not a clean break to get that into the other ANCs, but you see that one's way over the next one beside it is way under i think that can be resolved but the tracks just didn't let you find a good break to do that okay okay does anyone, so this, and this is relative to Dion's comment earlier, this cuts, this divides 8B and 8A at, a, I think that's Atlantic Street. Um, so it does separate 8B from 8A uh, across at Atlantic Street and splits that, well, that, top portion of, of Bellevue, but, um, you know, overall, uh, yeah, I, I can see this, this is a, this is a thoughtful map and thank you for this, sir, um, Andrew. And anyone opposed, now that we've seen this, uh, again, has anyone opposed me taking this one down? All right. Um, let's see. Troy, how can I look up your map? What's, you know what? Shared plans. Troy? All right. Maggie, what's the best way to refer to your map? Um, just type in Maggie and it's Maggie's 48 AMC map. Yep, there it is. This is asking me. Uh, sure, yeah, yeah, whatever. I just, I instead of just being view only, I made it shared in case any folks on the. Um, oh right. Can actually, go in and and make tweaks to it. Thank you for that thoughtfulness, Maggie. All right, so let's see. Let's zoom back in here. Uh, west of the river. We have 6007. Now that's at 6733. What's the thinking there, Maggie? I just, the only thing is, I didn't go and divide it into SMDs. I just left it alone. As, and I think also with the confusion with renaming and adding, I just kind of um, left it as just that's going to be an, uh, an ANC, but not divided down into SMDs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, going over to 8A, uh, let's see, 
population wise, we look to be balanced. ABO6 is a bit short at 1247, and ABO7 at 1122, and ADO7 at 3676. Um, we're going along, and yet again, a reminder see, we have uh, 42 here. That doesn't matter. We just want to make sure the boundaries make sense for neighborhood character and Maggie, what was your thought about putting this into a particular ANC? Would it go in the 8A or 8C? I see it surrounded by it also touches 80. Yeah, I think um, I think my initial intent was to have it be um, with 8C, but um, I mean, of course, numbers can change and groupings can change, and so um, I I can be swayed one way or another how we decide to put that in an ANC. Okay. Okay, so then 39 and 43 below that would be part of which A and C? 39, 43. Because I see we have uh, 80. Yeah, I level. believe my initial intent was to have those with 8C. Okay, all right. So then 8C would run to the top of Alabama Avenue, come over to, not sure what this street is. I think it's a numbered street right here going down the middle. Um, and then come across the top of what would be 8D. Uh, looking over here at bowling, the numbers are balanced. 2067. Uh, all right. So... Let's see, coming over to 8C, a little chunk here coming up in the Bellevue, and then we have 8C along the bottom, but we talked about this already, and this is some of the tweaks we were thinking of making to um, move 8CD around to make sense here. All the other numbers, uh, this SMD 41 is a bit over at 93. Mm -hmm. Uh, 2193. So it looks like um, looks like by and large you stayed in balance. Uh, got a little worried about this 8A07 here. That's yeah. I think it might be a, a something that I clicked something wrong. Um, I can go in after this and see if it if it requires you know just kind of I'll I'll go in a little bit um, and try to spend a little bit of time or maybe whenever. Um, Sheila, Dion, and I get together if there's any any feedback they might have about that area as well. Okay. All right. Uh, anyone opposed to me taking down this map? Troy, are you there? Yeah, sorry, I'm back. Okay. What was your map called in the... Um... I just want to pull it back up for everyone. Um... TDP. TDP. Mm -hmm. uh, but I don't know if I shared it. Actually, I think it's in my my own map. So I need to go back and, and change that. But um, screen share if I stop. Yeah, I can I can do that. I I, I just want to say that for purposes of what we've been doing, I, I'm I'm fine with what you've presented, Mr. Chairman, in terms of what we have identified in your map as 8A. Um, and then I wanted to just add in this other uh, component here, which is what we're doing with the notch. And again, we have about 700 people who are just hanging out who we really haven't assigned, so they don't have a place yet. Um, but uh, yeah, if if you wanted to um, stop sharing, I can share the the notch numbers. <clears throat> okay. Um, which one is it? Oh, right here. <laughs> okay. So if you can see my cursor here, uh, this is what we're calling the W6, W8 notch. And so looking at that notch, we have about 2,200 on the northern side of L. And then on the south side of L, we had about 2,000. Um, and so as you see, this exceeds by about... Um, about a hundred or so, but then with your map, Mr. Mr. Chairman, uh, you had about 2,500 people over here in this area. 
And so again, in total, we have about 700 people <laughs> who are just kind of, you know, hanging. So, you know, I don't know what to do with them. Maybe we can, um, maybe we can, you know, have them move. I don't know, but I'm just kidding. But uh, I think uh, we need to find a way to just incorporate those other individuals like uh, across the board here. And that way we just have to, um, you know, make it make sense. The other thing too, is that we might wanna consider splitting census tracts. I know that is a little bit more of a headache, uh, but we could do that. We just need to explain how we did it and why. Um, and uh, if I could, I'm gonna stop sharing this and share. Um, I have a census tract. Uh, or I thought I had a census tract one. I do, I just don't know where it is. Um, I have a census track, wait a minute, is it here? It's right here. All right, everything is kind of slowing down on my screen, but uh, I do have one that have all the census tracks on it for that area. And so we could look at how we can move people around that way as well. So um, I can't find it right now, I have too many screens open, but okay. that's where we're at, Mr. Chairman. I think then if that's going to be our recommendation, because we can't change the tool to really show it on screen, which is why we don't, none of us have that now, but I right. think we should make that point in the, um, in, in, in writing our report, um, in writing our report up on, uh, on a meeting number six, our last meeting in that the desire may be to split census tracts uh, along the three-way border there between the two notch ANCs, as well as, uh, I don't know, whatever the northernmost uh, current 8A um, right. SMD would be. Uh, and so, it's going to be ugly. I mean, I'm just going to be very <laughs> honest with you. It will be ugly in terms of, you know, how we do that. So if we're prepared to do it, you know, that's fine. But we have to make a recommendation because they would just be hanging out there and you know, there would be super districts, basically. Well, well, we can, I mean, keep in mind, we can deviate beyond the plus or minus 5% as long as we have reasoning. And just by virtue of the density of adding that notch to and having already gone through the links we have to add those, add the notch to a Navy Yard inclusive ANC, um, I, I don't, I don't think my guess is no one on the council would have any heartburn on why that goes above 2100 people in two or three, you know, very dense SMDs that are at the top corner of Ward 8. Um, so, uh, yeah, my, my guess is, is that we won't have to work too hard on that once we've uh, written everything up and explained ourselves. Um, so I hear you saying that you're fine then with um that you know trying to include your map in the map that i presented earlier which leaves us with four maps um and i believe there are there are nine of us here so um i guess we can go and go and we can go ahead and uh, vote is anyone opposed to that all right, so um, we'll start with um, boss eight one, and we can just do an all in favor aye, and no no need to nay. Just all in favor aye. If uh, you're in favor of this one, uh, Mr. Chairman. Yes. Should I pull it back up? One last thing here. I don't know if I'm in favor of any one map over the other. <laughs> I, I think all of them have different pieces that make sense to incorporate and to amend and to massage uh, on a single map. So I don't know if that makes your job harder or easier, what I just said. But um, there are pieces, I think, of every map that um, make sense for how we will move forward. But if, if it makes the for um you know for us to get through this exercise if it makes sense to just vote on a map i think that's fine too uh, but like if there's a single map where we are able to 
I don't know how that works, but if we're able to get to it and maybe make changes there, um, that would be a in real time. Not real time. Well, I guess that's real time. I mean, in other words, there's a shared map on Esri that you know folks can access. Um, hopefully, you have more than one uh, so that people don't you know destroy the one that you have. But uh, that you have a map where people are literally. It's it's almost like what we did back in the past, which is. I'm sorry, I'm off camera. Let me just turn on my screen here so people don't just hear me. It's almost like what we did in the past, which is we got we gathered around a big table and we had markers <laughs> and we marked out, you know, based on census tracts, uh, the the uh, SMDs that we were trying to create. Uh, this way, it's electronic and it's all in the Esri tool. So I would recommend that you know, if there's one map that we can work from, or if, if we feel like there's one map that is most sufficient, that we, A, make a copy of it so that <laughs> you have a saved copy somewhere in your file so that just in case people destroy it, but that, A, we, we, we have uh, committee members or others, you know, sort of access that so that they can make the changes that we're talking about here. Fair enough. I, I like the idea, but we need a starting point amongst the four that we have. It would, okay. I mean, for us to try to version control among four different maps and everyone's changing a different version of them. So we need a starting point um, between to get to our finishing point. And, you know, um, it's we can't let perfect be the enemy of good enough here. And given that we have two weeks, um, I, I, I'm not gathering that we're any of these maps that, that we pick, there would be major changes to it. But uh, just, just remembering that we're trying to maintain a certain population parameter um, and as well as incorporating the, the feedback. And that's why I kept harping on uh, the boundaries don't necessarily um, the boundaries matter more than what the names are or, or, or et cetera, or what ANC they're attached to. So um, I, I think, yeah, I, I, I think us picking amongst these four maps now, I mean, there are nine of us on the call. So <laughs> uh, yeah. Um, Sheila? Yes, just the point of clarification. So we vote on one of these maps tonight, which we agree neither, none of them are perfect, right. but the one that is as closest to where we're trying to go. And then, and I'm just trying to understand, once we pick that map, is there, when do we make those adjustments? Is it going to be, we take that map and all nine of us make nine individual tweaks to that map or are are we going to use the next meeting to say okay these are the 10 changes we want make those changes at that meeting and then go from there so i was going to get to that detail once we voted oh. i do have a plan okay um i just want to <laughs> well we're a bit over time already so i yeah, I was going to get to how we were going to get across the finish line. Okay. So uh, that being said, let's go ahead and vote on let's let's go ahead and vote on um, pick one of these these four maps. As our as our starting point to get across the finish line, then I'll explain uh, what our what our final final strategy is here. Uh, so, boss eight one, all in favor? No need for nays, just eyes. Going once, going twice. I'll say I for his. I'll say I. Okay. Eight. Yeah, boss okay. eight. Wait a minute. Uh, I. That was Sheila. Okay. All right. Boss A2. All in favor. Going once. Can I vote for Boss A1? And I think Ms. Clark was trying to vote too, but, um, Brian. Yeah, I did say Boss A1. 
Okay. Uh, boss eight two. All in favor. Going once, going twice. Uh, I guess my, my chairman's map. Going once. I'm in favor oh. of that one, Mr. Chairman. So, I'm, I'm in favor of that one as well. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna throw my hat in. And can I be recorded for your map, Mr. Chair? All right. Thank you, Maggie. Got into your map. I'm voting for yours. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Well, that's all of us that are on the call. Um, I'm sorry, Andrew. We didn't get a vote for you, so I'll say Maggie's map. All Aye. Right. Okay. All right, so um, it looks like we have three for boss eight one, uh, four for chairman's map and uh, one for uh, Maggie's map. So it looks like we're going with the chairman's map as a starting point. And I will share that with everyone uh, in the Esri tool. I'll also push the map out via PDF. Um, basically any which way I can figure out to share this thing, I will once we get off this call so that um, any feedback, additional changes, we can get, get that integrated back in. And I'm going to do like last meeting um, regarding the Office of Planning requests and ask that uh, any feedback that you all have be forwarded to the redistricting email address. And let me see if I can put that back in the chat here. Get that back by uh, close of business next Wednesday, the 23rd, uh, to give good time to just consider um, I'll keep an eye out for where that feedback is coming from so that uh, you know any clarification or whatever can thoughtfully be integrated into um, to, to the final map uh, that we will work on writing a report for in our sixth and last meeting on March, March 30th. Um, does that work? Any questions? Any, can anybody think of any details I'm leaving out on about how we get across the finish line there? So this is Troy again. Um, let me come on camera. Um, so I just wanted to be clear. Will there, you say you're going to share it in Esri, which means that we all will have access to it. So we can right. theoretically tweak it and mess with it and all of that. Right. Share it as well and say, here's how I would tweak your map, Mr. Mr. Chairman. Um, the other thing too, here's my concern about the email address thing. Like, I feel like it's a black hole. Like, I don't know, like, I guess you guys see it, but we don't see it. So we don't know what's coming in, what's leaving. Um, we would like to, I would like to see the comments that are coming in. Or, so I don't know if there's a way to create a, um, you know, a, a live document or, or something where we can see comments in real time, because I would like to know, you know, as I'm making tweaks, you know, maybe someone has a good point as to why we shouldn't do a thing that I'm thinking about doing. And so, um, however, Mr. Chairman, we can carry that out would be great. I, I don't know. But um, I, I'm, I'm, I guess I'm, I guess I'm proposing some type of a real time tracker that we all can see. Um, so either that's a spreadsheet or it's a, uh, a document or something, um, so that we can see the comments as they do come in. If comments are being uh, pushed that way, otherwise I'm happy with just using the Esri tool and just, um, you know, making tweaks there. Yeah, let's let's keep it to the Esri tool then. I mean, I'm gonna say that we left the root. So I'm gonna screen share here in a second. Uh, 
where'd it go? Uh, share. All right. Oh, sorry. Got too much on the screen here. Uh, this is, oh, I'm in the complete, pardon me, you all. Let me switch. I'm in the wrong folder. Uh, there we go. So what I'm doing is showing you all the total content since we created this redistricting email, the total content that has come into it. Um, the map that I did was based on this feedback, but as you can see, it's not extensive. Uh, this, is, this is what we have access to as uh, the executive members. This is um, you know, Vice Chair Coates. This is Secretary Carmen McCall. This is Wanda, myself, and the council member. Um, I'm definitely not hiding anything, but anything that came in, we tried to incorporate it into our efforts going forward after it came in. Um, I understand what would be like most efficient and useful in creating a final, um, you know, coordinating communication. It's just that, uh, <laughs> Let's just say I, it, it, it's, it's going to take a good amount of focus and attention to try to maintain a tool that way. So maybe, uh, uh, you know, C Commissioner Presswood, your idea of just doing it within the ESRI tool makes the most sense. Um, and that being, that being said, I will, I, will, um, I will push that. I will put every, all of the uh, committee members email address into a share effort after we get off this call so that everyone has plenty of time to um, get in and you know make edits. Um, it, is, it, any, any questions from anybody or any further thoughts? Uh, Sheila, I see you have your hand up. How, how do we make, like we're gonna make edits and then have another vote? Like. What's no, we're not, we're not we're not voting on anything else at this point. We I are mean, doing, we're going to go in and make edits for what if we're not going to vote on it again. We're going to make edits and then try to incorporate those edits. At this point it's up to executive action to make sure that comments are as inclusive as possible while representing um what is you know what is a an acceptable final product the thing is that we'll all make edits but in in making edits there's a good chance that everyone won't abide by either neighborhood boundaries or population requirements or etc so you know there's going to be need to be some management of whatever edits come out which is why you know taking choice uh, recommendation of working with or maintaining a master version as a starting point to try to integrate, in, uh, integrate those comments in. Um, but that's once those comments are integrated in, uh, those received by Wednesday of next week, we'll take those comments and then we will all talk out, discuss what this map represents such that a final redistricting report can be written. Yes, sir, Brian. Uh, okay, uh, so is there going to be another meeting or is that going to happen the 30th? Like, so That's everybody's going to submit their comments next week. Are we going to, and then we're going to just see an updated, somebody is going to update all of those comments, consolidate that. And yes, yes, yes. Um, I, you, you are putting your trust in your executive committee to make sure that any feedback via the Esri tool or otherwise is integrated in as best possible to what we've um, decided will be our final working draft. And then that will be drawn up and presented and we will then discuss the report. So the whole point of the next meeting will not be to vote on anything. It will be to design the report as the report is due two days after the next meeting. So I have a point of clarification, Chair Thompson. So 
March 23rd is the deadline by which any and everybody makes tweaks, comments, or changes to the master map that you're going to put into Esri for everyone. Is that correct? Yes, I can put it into Esri. Thanks for you know carrying forth my thinking on that, but I'm, I'm gonna lock it. There won't be any changes made thereafter. The reason thereafter, being- Thereafter when? Af after all of those comments are integrated coming out of next Wednesday, there won't be any changes to the map. And the reason being- No, no, I'm, can I, and I don't mean to interrupt you. That's what I'm trying to understand. So changes, you're gonna put the map in tomorrow and i say tomorrow because esri is going undergoing maintenance right now so anything oh, right. yeah up until 8 11 p.m tonight won't That's take right. so tomorrow when you drop it in we the the task force members and the public have until march 23rd to make any changes to your master map correct that's i'm just right. trying to understand that, that's what you're saying right and and I will do my best to integrate those changes cohesively, i.e. respectful of everyone else that submitted feedback between now and March 23rd. Okay, so we have until the 23rd, and the we includes the task force members. So for those of us that might be working on, say, what is now 8D, or if Jamila's working on 8A or whatever, we have until March 23rd to make those changes and submit on onto your master map and then after that the executive committee i think i heard you correctly will then present the quote-unquote final map yes and then we will discuss the report that needs to be submitted based on that final map in during meeting six okay and then last question just i'm trying to understand process so once so you all take all of that information after the 23rd. The task force won't have any other commentary on that final map. So once you all present it, that's it. And then we just discuss the report. That's what you're saying, correct? Right, 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 right. So if you, and just to, just, uh, to help, if you can go to, Alyssa Silverman's redistricting website, there are links there to the uh, the redistricting reports from from previous efforts that sort no, no, of I illustrate what it is that the final report has to look like and what you know how wh what we're going to be doing in that in that last meeting. Oh no, no, no. I'm clear because I am facilitating the Ward 7 redistricting task. So I'm clear on the process. In this whole thing, because I live and breathe it for my job. On the days that we aren't here, I'm doing it for my job. So I'm clear on that. I'm just trying to understand our process. So once the the once we input information on the 23rd, it's and you all make the changes. It's basically final at that point. We as the task force won't make any other decisions on that final map. Correct. That's correct. Okay. We are, our, our last meeting will be about packaging up our work product to forward to the committee of the whole. And the reason I'm, I'm asking for the 23rd as a deadline is because, you know, I mean, it's going to take some, some studying, some you know, rejiggering some so some analysis to try to make sure that everyone's wishes are respected based on whatever feedback comes in out between now and then, so that we can have a final map on screen within the first 10, 15 minutes, uh, we will shift the discussion from what's on the screen to, all right, 8A's boundaries are, uh, this was our thinking, the narrative that we're gonna include in our redistricting report. And then one last final question. I got you on the process. Sounds good. Can you, um, the reasoning behind us not taking another vote on the map, not in just so that, say for instance, if all changes are made and somebody still doesn't like the, the map and they want to be on record for that, is there a reason behind not taking a, fin a vote on the final map? 
Well, there's an opportunity to go on record uh, during the citywide hearings, but uh, we can't yet again, let perfect be the enemy of good enough. And we have to meet our deadline. No, I'm not. No, no, no. I'm not saying that we don't meet the deadline. I was just asking the question in the reasoning behind not voting on the final map. That was simply my question. I, nothing about changing deadlines. Yeah, th that was the answer. Gotcha. If I may, Mr. Chairman, I, I do sort of understand maybe a point that uh, Ms. Bunn is making, which is that <coughs> today we voted to advance a draft, uh, to advance a draft and to continue working on a draft, but you have to have a final version of it. And at some point, um, we all have to weigh in on that. And so well, I don't know if that's what we do at the last meeting, even if it's just a quick, you know, run through and then, you know, we just know where we stand. Uh, and then at that point, we move forward with the report. But if I am, and my memory is faulty these days, but if I'm recalling what we did 10 years or what happened to process from 10 years ago, there was um, a final um, vote um, to ensure that everyone has at least seen the final product and either agreed or disagreed, but at least they got a chance to vote on it. Well, yes. what's the outcome if everyone disagrees on the final map? Then so honestly, they're we aren't in, having another then their task force. <laughs> their task force that that don't report out. By the way, let me let me let you know that too. <laughs> if 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 they're not clear, if there's no uh, you know majority on how to go then you don't send anything into the council of the whole and then what happens is the council picks up the rest of the ball um largely looking at what we've done but um yeah <laughs> that, that's also a possibility too uh mr chairman um so but anyway i just wanted to just follow through with that all right well um Thank you. Thanks, Troy. I mean, and, and thanks everyone. Like uh, the goal here was for us to solicit feedback, have solid community engagement, be open and engaged and sort of abide by, you know, the redistricting effort at the city level occurred last fall in the spirit of it. Um, I think we've all <laughs> done our best or uh, attempted to. So, like, a, um, you know, we will we will move forward to the next meeting. We will present the final map. We can definitely have time to discuss it, but uh, we we will move on to producing a report as per our goal when we started, and um, and you know that will. That will that will go on the record as what we accomplished over the last three months. Um, and with that, uh, if if there's no further commentary, uh, I would like to adjourn this meeting and, like I said, say say thanks again. Uh, this is the the big hurdle happened this evening. Um, we have most of whatever we're going to submit to the committee of the whole. Uh, we've accomplished that this evening, and and I do appreciate everyone's time, and I will see you all at uh, 6 p.m. on March 30th, and I look forward to hearing from you uh, based on this uh, final map or the map that we voted on this evening by CLB on Wednesday, March 23rd. Um, otherwise, as, as Sheila noted, the redistricting tool is down, so once I get up and have a good cup of coffee, I will get uh, this final map out to everyone for uh, the fine tuning that we'll do over the next week. All right. Commissioner Thompson, can I ask just one question? I put it in the chat. I don't know if you saw it or you can answer it in the chat if that's cool. Okay, what's the question? Um, in your map, I was trying to, I know we can't look at it. I want to know how many single member districts are in east of the river, how many are west of the river? I don't have that information offhand. Okay, I'll text you. All right. <laughs> All right. Um, all in favor of not adjourning, say aye. All right, thanks everyone. Thank you. All right, see you all on the 30th. <laughs>